Welcome back to another tutorial from the desk of the Army Painter's lead studio painter, Thomas Coltow. Today we're going to show you how Thomas went about painting the fantastic orc from our friends at Daybreak Miniatures, featured on the box art for the upcoming War Paints Fanatic Mega Paint set. Today we're only going to be using the colors found inside the set. This comprehensive set includes 50 of the must-have colors from the Fanatic range. The paints inside along with the free storage rack make this an insane value and a great way to kickstart your Fanatic collection. Thomas began with a Zenithal Prime of our matte black and matte white air primers. The Zenithal Prime helps to establish volume and acts as a guide for Thomas to help him locate his highlight placement later on. Pay attention to this mix as it will be used frequently throughout this tutorial, Abyssal Blue and Matte Black. He's going to apply this color into the shadows with a regiment brush. What makes this model really pop on the box art and on the tabletop is the transition from the almost blue-green to a vibrant yellow-green skin. And that all begins with this shadow color. Next, he'll begin blending in some Fanatic Green skin to the previous mix to build his transitions. Thanks to the new formula and its slightly prolonged drying time, it allows these highly pigmented paints to remain workable long enough to play with the paint and manipulate it on the surface of the miniature. This is an advantage for advanced painters who do a lot of blending, but it also aids in allowing army painters and beginning painters smooth and efficient coverage. Now with green skin and ice yellow, Thomas is going to reinforce those highlights. You can see on the musculature on the thigh that Thomas leaves some of that shadow color in the creases and recesses, allowing the volume and depth that he created with the Zenithal highlight to be replicated now with color. Now it's time to punch up that green and add some vibrancy. For that, Thomas is using Rainforest from the Vibrant Green Flexible Color Triad. He's thinned this down with a bit of clean water and probably some of the pigmentless stabilizer from the range to help retain that pigment dispersion for a nice smooth, even glaze coverage. With this glaze, it really begins to tie in all of the paler yellow tones with the deeper shadow tones. Next, he'll add a little bit of demonic yellow to that mixture to really push the saturation a step further. You can see how this all comes together as the rest of the model is being painted. Go back to that mix of black, blue, and green from before to reestablish some of the shadow work, placing these deep colors onto the bottom facing parts of the musculature. Remember that painting at the masterclass level like this is not a linear process and often requires layers of repeated layers to achieve such smooth and beautiful blends. That's why Thomas will grab more of that green skin and rainforest blend to marry those transitions on the model. Let's go ahead and recap the paints used to produce this glowing green skin for the box art. We will move on to painting the leather and cloth straps on the model using a mix of fur brown and ice yellow as a base coat. Alternatively, if you have the complete set or complete range, a color like buffed hide or paratrooper tan would work really nicely here. Thomas will apply a shadow by mixing this in with our previous black and abyssal blue mix, this will aid in having consistent shadows and shading across the miniature. Then we'll apply a highlight of Barbarian Flesh in a textured fashion. Not all highlights are required to be fine edge highlights. Applying dots and scratches like Thomas is doing here only adds texture and realism to your miniature. Finally, we will refine those textured highlights with an application of iced yellow used very sparingly. Then again, we will marry our work with a thin down glaze of fur brown. We'll repeat the steps across the other leather details on the miniature, but right now we're just gonna pump up the tunes so you can sit back and follow along. Now here's a recap of the products and paints used for this portion of the tutorial. For the cloth, we will apply a simple base tone of mold berry. This is a nice desaturated violet that has a lot of versatility 
as a base coat for either brighter reds or even a highlight for desaturated purples as it sits at that deepest position within the desaturated violet color triad. Next with pure red, Thomas will begin layering up to achieve that vibrant cool red before weathering and adding texture to this loincloth. Once that red is applied, he'll use Dorado Skin to add scratchy textured highlights across the cloth. Then I'll go back to the Abyssal Blue and Black Blend and mix that with his Pure Red to apply a shadow. Now that you can see this used across three different key areas on the mini, you can witness the uniformity it brings and how this consistent shadow ties the whole miniature together. Now it's time to recap all the paints used for the loincloth. For the stone jewels, the axe, and other details, we'll apply a base coat of thunderous blue. The coverage of these paints, even after years of developing, testing, and using them, is still astonishing watching how well they cover every single time. Going back to our shadow blend, we'll mix that in with the thunderous blue to apply shading to those focused areas. By adding ice yellow to our thunderous blue, we're also establishing a uniform highlight tone, adding consistency to all of the highlights around the miniature. We'll finish this off with a pure, refined highlight of ice yellow on the finest details and most raised edges. For a bit of fun, Thomas is going to thin down some fresh rust. This is a new effects paint that works right out of the bottle as a heavy rust effect and very well when thinned down for recess washes. The paint features a very light texture, which is more intense from the bottle and more subtle when thinned, but both consistencies offer a very realistic effect. You can see the paints we used here. Time to paint some fur. Start with a simple base coat of Desert Yellow. This is one of 22 color matches to the War Paints Air and color primers of the same name throughout the full Army Painter range. Apply a thin down layer of Oak Brown as a glaze wash. You could also use Strong Tone Wash here if you wanted to, but thinning down Oak Brown works just as nicely. Re-establish your highlights with your Desert Yellow base tone. And then we'll apply a refined highlight with Dorado Skin from our wet palette. Now here's the breakdown of products used. Time to paint some teeth and bone. We're gonna replicate this on all of the teeth and bone across the miniature. Starting once again with Desert Yellow, this is thinned down a bit with some retarder and stabilizer. This is going to help us as we blend up to a nicer bone color later on. We'll mix in some more of the ice yellow and add a layered highlight. Then add some pure ice yellow to the most raised areas. Finally, we'll mix some oak brown and matte black Thin it with some stabilizer and apply a shadow glaze to the recesses. Here's all the colors we used for the bone on the model. What better way to paint our Daybreak miniatures or care than to begin with our go-to mix of Abyssal Blue and Matte Black for a base tone. Simply apply this all over the hair details on the miniature. With Abyssal Blue, we'll go ahead and apply a simple layered highlight all over the hair. Then we'll apply a more focused highlight of Crystal Blue, another carryover color match color from the previous range. Take your time here and be as neat as you can as you pick out the striations in the hair that are modeled onto this very detailed miniature. Finally, add a very focused and refined highlight of ice yellow. Once again, this goes to add uniformity through your volumes of color across the miniature. Thomas then will apply a light wash of strong skin shade. This will help to establish some of the details and retain some of the details on the hair on the miniature. 
let's check out those colors that we use for the hair here. To add a bit of variance between all of the brown and leather tones, Thomas painted up the grip on the axe and the straps in a slightly different fashion. Using fur brown as a base coat like before, he will then apply a glaze of oak brown to these areas. When it's time to work up some highlights, we'll mix in some lava orange with oak brown and apply this to the uppermost facing parts of the grip. Adding yellow to the previous mix, we'll apply a textured highlight. And then with Topaz Skin, we will work on highlighting up the straps on the accent. We'll finish that off with a refined highlight of Barbarian Flesh. Here's the paints we used for the grip and the straps. Now it's time to put another effects paint to work, this time with True Blood. This glossy red works very well in combination with Dry Blood, but we're focusing on the paints that are inside the set, so we'll only be using True Blood this time. To start, Thomas is picking areas on the miniature where he'd like to place some gore, like the shoulder, the thigh, the back, and other areas on the skin to make him look battle-hardened. You can thin this paint down to add blood stains and streaks, and you can heavily stipple it to make a very violent effect. The blood effect really adds to the overall theme of the miniature. All that's left is to base your model and you're ready to put it on the tabletop or in your showcase cabinet. At the Army Painter, we believe that inside every painter is an even better painter. War Paints Fanatic are designed to perform at every stage of your hobby journey. Whether you're a gamer looking to quickly get your miniatures to tabletop quality, a dedicated hobbyist refining your techniques, or a professional painter searching for your next trophy, War Paints Fanatic offer the quality and performance at the price that you need. Find your War Paints Fanatic Mega Paint Set and full Fanatic range at your friendly local game store, preferred online retailer, or direct at www.thearmypainter.com.